What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet. No, we can't do it that way. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. And today we're talking about how I edit my photos, but specifically my film photos, you see, because it's a little bit of a different world than editing my digital photos. And being that I've been shooting films since May exclusively, I figured I would dive into uh, what that process looks like. <laughs> Whatever little banjo string. All right, something I see a lot of in the comments. Do you edit your film scans? If you're shooting film, it, what's the point of actually editing the film shots that just shoot digital then? However, a lot of labs scan in your film negatives with a flat profile so that you have the most latitude to, to edit after they've scanned them. I would say the majority of people that you see shoot film, that shoot film online edit their scans. We just don't have to do it in a dark room anymore. You can do it in Lightroom. So recently we were shooting in Banff and I've never shot film in Banff before. So I figured I would take 10 film scans. Um, we'd go through that together because it's been a while since we've done a little Lightroom tutorial and editing. And that's because what I just explained, I've actually been doing less of it shooting film. So let's begin with this shot here. This is a 35 mil shot. I almost exclusively shot Portra 800 on this entire trip. The warmth and the goldenness that is Portra. Chef's kiss. So this is straight out of the camera. Zooming into the trees here, it could be slightly underexposed. There's a bit of nice halation on the trees. The flare coming through the woods looks great. Taking some highlights down, we could see what kind of range we have. With film, I don't really like killing the highlights because they look so unique. Maybe a bit of contrast. What do we just do there? If we look before and after, and that's it. Now, I'm doing way less edits, so. This is classic portrait, like the skin tones are just nice and warm. I would wanna bring out the color of the jacket and the skin a little bit more. I always start with the tone curve here, grabbing the black point at the bottom and dragging it to the right. And that's almost 90% of every photo edit that I've been doing, looking at the before and after of that, that's just sliding that contrast out a little bit more. That's pretty much what it looked like that day. This next shot is very interesting. Straight out of camera, the tonal curve at the bottom here, making those blacks in the trees a little richer. Maybe seeing what the highlights could reveal, dropping those slightly. So you get way more mountain, but you lose a bit of the crisp brightness of the photo. So a little bit, bump the exposure slightly. That's it. We look before and after. It's just cleaning up that contrast mostly because these are scanned in flat. I hope this isn't super anticlimactic, but I have been getting those questions a ton. How much do you edit your photos? Do you even edit film photos? Some of them you'll see here at the end, there is a little more work than others. Here's a shot also from the M6, these first five. This is underexposed. When the blacks get lifted and look really washed out, you've underexposed it. But a lot of this can be recovered because film really retains a lot of detail in the highlights. Like, look, if I just bring that exposure down, like look how much of that mountain is still there. So in combination with some highlights, with bringing that down, a little bit of that tonal curve, even shadows, this one requires a little more love. I probably wouldn't save it much past this. It's a very nostalgic feeling. I find that might be one of my favorite features of this new endeavor is the photography feels nostalgic. It feels more special, more unique. You can tell there was thought crafted into each frame. Maybe that's just me romanticizing the whole process, but uh, let's move on to this one. When we got to this lookout at Pato Lake, it was very foggy. You could literally see the fog moving down the valley. It was snowing, raining, all of the above. We got sun here like 20 minutes later that cut through all the fog, burned it all the way, and it was completely gone in a totally different scene. If you're a landscape photographer and you get somewhere to shoot the landscape, stay for a few hours. There are probably 10 or more different scenes in there that look entirely different from what you got initially when you arrive. I would highly recommend whenever you go shoot landscape photos, give yourself the time to just post up. It's one of the reasons I like making coffee in the woods because it gives you time to do something outdoors. It makes for great photos and you can pass the time as you let the light set differently to get an entirely different scene. Did you happen to catch that video we made about the iPhone? How we shot the whole video on the iPhone? Every single sound in that video. Not real. All of it came from Artlist. Okay, I'm gonna show you what we mean by everything was fake. We need some impact. Just the sound of an ax chopping wood doesn't sound good. It's okay, but it needs that like, I wanna feel that wood splitting in half. And how do I do that? Layering with the atmosphere. You put them all together, it's starting to feel good. Could even be just the bell on a door when you're leaving a cafe. 
It's those subtle details. And all of that was from Artlist, not to mention the music itself. All of this is available and very easy to search with Artlist. They have an AI search that also makes things even easier. If you find a piece of footage that you want, it'll suggest which sound effects it thinks will go well with it. That cuts down so much time when you're editing, just scrolling through sites, trying to find what works. They've also just launched their trend report for 2024. Artlist have put together a nice document going through shifts and changes within the creator economy so that you can read this and stay up to date with the latest and greatest, keep your content fresh, and understand all those major shifts happening within the industry. If you click the link in my description below, you can access the Artlist Holiday Sale. That grants 10% off the Max Pro subscription and get you two months free. Hundreds of thousands of songs, sound effects, templates, footage, all of that, all of these assets for your creative needs. My biggest struggle with film this year has been deciding what to leave untouched and what to edit or how much to edit. It's got that filmic look. I like that it's kind of foggy. I don't want to dehaze it. That is the scene that I saw standing there with my camera. Let's just see if we can do some of the typical edits that I've been doing just to maybe a bit of saturation just for that blue down there. Like I would not touch this past where I've got it here. Before, after, and again, that's maybe just countering a bit of that flat profile. As an example of the point I just made, this next shot is the same scene, but taken maybe 20 minutes later. No fog, no snow, way more visibility. So doing the same edits with the tonal curve and a few highlights to bring back some of those mountains in the distance, I would maybe straighten this out before, after, not a whole lot. The little M6 in portrait, everything always seems to come out a little more raw, real life captured moments. It's really unique, whereas the medium format stuff always comes out very polished, crisp, and set up. And that brings us into the medium format shots. Now you can see immediately how this looks different. Now these are scanned in with the rebate, you can see along the edges. I crop it out, but I like the lab to scan it with that outer border rebate, just so that if I want it, it's there. Medium format is just so much larger. The negatives are so much much larger, you're getting way more detail. It looks almost more like digital. If I drag in a little bit from that tonal curve, drop these highlights, now there's not much coming back because it just was that foggy. I would be happy right about here, before, after. Potentially my editing style has grown up. It's matured since this endeavor began and I'm grateful for that. I love the process and I, I love my photos from past but I'm really, really enjoying the direction it's going and seeing my body of work change. I'm really excited for the film book that I've been putting together because it's going to look entirely different from anything I've ever created. If you're new and you haven't heard of this endeavor yet, I've set out to shoot film for an entire year from May to May. So I'm shooting that whole time and then compiling that into my first coffee table book, which will be a year on film. So very excited to put that together because there are tons of photos that I have held back from posting on Instagram that I am just frothing to to share. That shot's done. Moving on to that valley. Now this is the same valley as the medium format. You can see the difference. Let's just do the same thing. This is literally exactly the same as the edit I just posted. So before, after. These are the same five edits. I could just probably paste them at this point. This one is great. This would have been a great black and white frame. This one I might cool down slightly, like negative 10. You can see how much of a difference that made. I wouldn't go past that. So before, after. So that minus 10 made a huge difference. All right, taking a look at this frame here. I struggled with this one because there was a lot of color coming through. It was sunset, there was pinks and purples in the sky. And I feel like when I got these scans back and I looked at the photos, I didn't see much of that purple. I don't know if it's the film stock that like didn't render it nicely. Maybe it's my inexperience somewhere. If I drop these highlights down, look at all these layers of clouds. That just goes to show you how well film retains those highlights. I might counter that with raising the whites a little bit or just adjusting slightly here on the, the tonal curve. I think that looks good. Subtle, subtle. I feel like this is a new chapter. Now this last one is Pato Lake again. This one particularly felt too warm to me. This is where I go against what I've been saying a little bit. If we do the same edits with some highlights, with some contrast, it's still missing something. This is probably where like maybe the film stock I used wasn't the right film stock, which warmed it up. It looks great for the sun hitting the tips of these trees here, but for the rest of the scene, it really doesn't look that wintry to me. So I'm definitely gonna adjust the temperature here. 
I don't know, negative 13. It's a little on the green side. I might go towards magenta just a little more to get rid of that. If we go before and after, you can see that is a quite a big difference. And I think that was my mistake in what I chose to shoot it with. But in, in this instance, yes, that would be the most, the most editing I would be happy to do on a photo. So looking at all these photos from the beginning, that is just a quick snapshot of some of the pictures I got from one day shooting in the mountains. And oh my, this has just been the most fun. And I hope that kind of answers your questions to how much I do edit my film shots. Ultimately, not a whole lot, but if I really have to, based on an error that I've made, I, I will do as much as I can to correct it. But that's it for me. I uh, hope you got something out of that. If you want more tutorials like this, if you wanna see more, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you wanna see. And if that is something, definitely let me know because we read them for feedback. So have a great week. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet. Lots of great content. I appreciate you being here. Have a great week and I will see you on the other side. I've never processed photos in a dark room. I'd love to do that. I'd love to process photos in a proper dark room. And secondly, I'd love to process my own photos. Actually expect to see them at some point. I don't know if it's this year or next year, but it's happening. However, until then, 